Nothing but the highest sophistication on board, as always. We need to drill some holes in the hull. We present a true and honest account. Okay, attempt number three. I've said it before, but if you are going cruising, an elementary teacher is secret to everything. Okay, there's no avoiding it. I think we have to actually drill a hole in the boat now. I am useful for something. Like the professionals that we are. Dun, 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 dun. Oh, no, 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 no. Last time on Red Seas, our bridle snapped when 45 knots came ripping through the anchorage. So we picked up some 12 strand mega braid line and learned how to splice it to make a new one. The old shackles were so corroded we had to wield an angle grinder to get them off. And then we battled another day of high winds to get the new bridle in place so Indy was safe. It wasn't a job we expected to have to do, but that's boat life. Okay, we are almost there. Typically, you come to St. Martin, as we've discovered, and you just add project after project after project, pretty much because opportunities arise. Um, they have these amazing jumble sales here where they sell off just spare parts from boats. We've picked up some great bargains there. This one didn't actually come from a jumble sale, but we spotted it online and I couldn't resist. So um, what we did was we picked up one of these big compression posts. This actually came off a smaller version of Indy. Uh, so Indy Oko is a 47 foot leopard. This came off a 43 foot leopard and is actually part of the structure for the trampolines. So basically this big post comes back to a hinge and um, it's quite straightforward. This normally would be connected to the boat to the crossbar along the front of the boat. We're actually going to use it I hope for a bowsprit. How are we doing? <laughs> I'm doing very well and not falling into the sea. What have you dropped into the sea? <laughs> <laughs> Nothing yet, but uh, there's still time. So basically, I'm going to try and like hold this up here and then create a little right angle with the pencil and a ruler or something somehow and then trace that out that shape and the pencil will draw on the board that exact shape onto the board. So once we got that traced out, we take the board to... Our man. Um, okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, there's a welder who's gonna help us actually build, basically build a flat surface that we can bolt the uh, hole, what are we calling it? Compression, Compression post. Compression post, and this piece. Yeah, so we can bolt this bracket on. This is the bit I'm gonna drop in the sea. So because this is a flat surface, then if we can just have a piece made that fits that curve perfectly, when we bolt it on, it will just kind of distribute all of the forces basically properly down this compression post so that it's not gonna break anything as soon as we put a sail up. Well, that's the idea anyway. Nothing but the highest sophistication on board, as always. So, um, <laughs> Like the professionals that we are. Pray for us, I think that's all I can ask. It's gonna be exciting if it works. I've said it before, but if you are going cruising, if you have any idea about buying a boat and living on it, take a primary school teacher. An elementary teacher is secret to everything because I don't understand what this is, but apparently it's a process called scribing and it involves coloring in, which is your specialty. Oh, I can do it in pretty colors. Unpredictably, no, unsurprisingly, incredibly predictably, um, it turns out we can't hold a big piece of starboard perfectly straight in mid-air. <laughs> so uh, I drew the line three times on the board, thought that's fine, I'll uh, you know, kind of take an average of all of them and they just it all end up completely different. So I thought let's just cut it, this out of wood and then we can take this piece up and check that it fits and if not we can come and adjust it a little bit more and it's a much longer process but it should end up actually uh, being a little bit more accurate. You know what we could do? We could just have 17 tries and not film them and just have me put this on and then transition to be like, ta-da, three days later we got it to fit. We present a true and honest account. <laughs> it's not very right, is it? I don't like this gap here. Or oh, this one. <laughs> How is this so far away? Yeah, that's worse. That's worse. Okay, attempt number three. New plan, Ian doesn't trust me. <laughs> what are we doing now? 
Um, so after doing all of the complicated scribing and stuff, we then remembered that the end of the crossbar is open and exactly the same profile as the middle of the crossbar. So I just held up a bit of cardboard to the end and drew around it. <laughs> okay. Finally, we have a bowsprit. Well, we, we have most of the bowsprit. I just dropped the integral bolt over the side. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no! Who needs that part? It's fine. <laughs> Mark the welder here, who is amazing, has actually welded on these little eyes for us. Oh, they look so good. So it's really neat and tidy. And then I just put soft shackles on it. So basically, it'll all make sense. But the bows will have lines coming up to these soft shackles. One on that side, one over there. Yeah. And then this will be for a furling unit and going up to the top of the mast. Cool. And the whole thing will sit out in front of the boat. And to make that happen, because we don't have a bracket or anything for that natively, check out what Mark made. Wow. How cool is this? So this was the original hinge, but he's actually just repurposed this whole section here and made this curve to match the crossbar. That's so amazing. The crossbar of Indy, it'll mount on the front and then scooch on here with the bolt that we now don't have. <laughs> and then the whole thing can can like hinge up. <laughs> you alright there? I'm sliding over. Tell me again. And then the whole thing will just hinge up out the way. Nice! And then drop back down when we want it. Kind of a. And then in classic fluke fashion, I ordered up on Amazon some cleats that I was thinking with the, the lines that come up from the bow, I'm going to make it so we can like slacken them off and the whole thing can tilt up or okay, be used yeah, in action. Gotcha. So when they're pulled tight, I need to be able to lock them off somehow and I thought cleats would do it. How is this for accidental accuracy? Oh, that's nice. So I just need to drill and bolt those, one on each side, and then we'll just drill and bolt them into the bar and now we have the lines come back and go through cleats. Oh yeah, that's pretty well planned. And they're like, they're, they're, they're the perfect size, it's ridiculous. So given recent practices of throwing stuff off the boat <laughs> and having only just paid for this bracket... <laughs> Good idea. It's probably wisely secured. You're going to tie the other end to something or just tie a string on it? It just gives us time, we can chase the string as it's unwinding like Jaws. Come on, Hooper, come on, hurry up, tie it on! Confident that we really did only need to tie on one end of the string, we started marking up where the bracket needed to go on the crossbeam. So what are you doing? You don't have the right tools. <laughs> Marked. We drilled holes in the front of the bar and crossed our fingers that it wouldn't sabotage the structural integrity of the whole boat. Then we just needed six rivets to hold it in place, ready for the next step. Just two? Yeah, that'll be fine. Two's good. I mean, how much force can the wind really put on this thing? I mean, it's only air, isn't it? <laughs> I tried blowing on it, it didn't fall over. <laughs> we have a thing! We have a thing! Look at a thing! <laughs> oh no, you, you cannot Mission Impossible that. That was 90s Venice Beach limbo competition. <laughs> <laughs> I'd have to wear a Hawaiian shirt for that, wouldn't I? Yes, go and get your a drink in a hand, like a daiquiri or something. <laughs> and now comes the really horrible job. So we have cleared out everything from the bow lockers right at the front of the boat. And it was a good excuse anyway, because when we bought the boat, we just chucked everything that had been left on board into those areas and had not looked at it again. But the reason is we need to drill some holes in the hull. <laughs> I hate saying that sentence even. Um, there is a crash locker right at the front. So the bow is divided. The top half is storage and the bottom half is a crash locker. It's supposed to be unaccessible so that if we do hit anything, make a huge hole in the boat, it doesn't flood water right through to the rest of the hull. Um, we need to access that so that we can put some pad eyes on and attach lines to the bow sprit. So we're going to fit some hatches uh, that we can lock and then access when we need. And hopefully they're going to be small enough that they're not too scared but large enough we can just fit an arm through and fit the pad eyes in. So I have just cleaned out the lockers and I have left Ian to go and actually do the hard work of putting the holes in. Oh, that looks comfy. Uh -huh. So roomy in there. <laughs> I mean, can you believe that they claim this was actually a cabin? <laughs> Absolutely ridiculous, isn't it? Technically, this is supposedly big enough to be a coffin berth. That's what they claim. That can be yours. Well, there's another one on the other side just for you. 
Um, no, you've done a great job because this was all moldy a minute ago. It looks good, huh? It actually looks kind of white. <laughs> I know, I don't want to put all the stuff back in it now. Yeah, <laughs> but sadly, we've got to fit this guy, so. Basically, we got this hatch that is airtight, or at least that's what they say. It's got this rubber gasket on it and stuff. However, it's got quite a big perimeter. Uh, I don't know what you call that, a lip. So wherever we put this is gonna be as far into the peak as we can get it, I figure. Next time, I might use a mask, because that was disgusting. It still kind of is actually, there's a lot of dust in the air, it's all fiberglass and nastiness. But yeah, that didn't go badly. Once again, science. I'm totally guessing it, getting away with it. This is what we're about. It's just the only way we should ever function. We are finally at the stage today of drilling the big scary holes. Um, I say that having drilled a lot of scary holes already. We've already been busy. You can see we've added some cleats. Uh, so these cleats, I just found them on Amazon and then we've already made up some Dyneema lines. And because we want it to be adjustable, we want to be able to swing it up and down. We've kind of come up with this crazy solution. <laughs> this, uh, how not to do it on a boat. We have decided to put in uh, like a Dyneema friction ring system. That'll all make sense later. And now we need to get on with the bigger, scarier holes because today we need to drill six, six? Six. Six holes down by the waterline at the bows, and that's going to be to hold down these black lines, um, which we have some uh, pad eyes to connect to, and then that'll act as like the lateral forces to then counteract the pull of the, the halyard. Okay. And the halyard's not clutched, but it is by your foot. Gotcha. Persuasion tactics. There we go. Nice. Ooh. So now the bowsprit is in position, we need to work out where to drill the holes on the hull so that these lines can come down and attach to exactly the same point on either side. And being on anchor, I mean it is quite calm today, but there is absolutely no way we can tell what is flat, what, that we can't tell what way is up, um, and we have to do that twice. So I think what we're going to do is tie a line from the front of the trampolines to the back that has enough slack in it that we can pull it down as a triangle. It just means there's a fixed point at the front and the back of the trampoline and it's the same on both sides. So if we measure a triangle on this side, we should be able to replicate it and make exactly the same shape on the other hull and therefore get the two pad eyes in the same place. That's the hope anyway. If the science is right, we should be able to loop this over the last stud of the trampoline. Yeah. This is why people do this on the hard, you know that. People don't do this to anchor <laughs> in a dinghy. And then we should be able to just draw a triangle with our finger and then tape up that part there. And that will be our marker for Beautiful. exactly where to drill holes. Exactly. Just above our waterline. There are certain people we know who watch these episodes who will be despairing at the fact that we're doing this. Yeah, but it's so going to work. I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> Okay, cool. We have something of a marker. Cool. I didn't drop in the sea. Well done. There's still time. <laughs> okay, there's no avoiding it. I think we have to actually drill a hole in the boat now. <laughs> I'm not doing it. <laughs> this isn't going to be my fault. Fault? I thought we were a team. <laughs> Wow, team spirit right there. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna go inside and make sure that when the hole comes through, it is in the right place. I mean, there's nothing that we can do if it's not, but um, I no. still feel comfortable knowing as much as we can about where this hole's gonna be. I mean, it's gonna be fine, right? Yeah. You agree that's where the hole should be? Yeah. So we measured it from inside and uh, this bit has got like a really thick core and then at the front, it just goes to thin fiberglass around the curve. So all we need to do is make sure that we get the hole far enough back that it's definitely going through the core and not through the skinny bit. Um, and I think it's far enough back. Might wait till the dinghy brigade have left before we start drilling holes. <laughs> Ooh. 
Okay. This is a good idea, right? Oh, I'm terrified. Just no more wake. No waves. It's gonna be perfect and smooth. Okay. Okay, we're in contact with the boat. Here we go. I'm doing it. I'm sorry, Indy. It's like she's at the dentist. It's for your own good. Okay, I'm going back in my little hole again. And I'm really hoping that the drill comes through in the right place this side. I'll bring it with me. Okay, so inside this hatch is where the bolt is gonna come through. And you can see this dark area here is core. And the head of that line is where it gets skinny up at the front. Okay, I'm ready. Woohoo! Yay! It's in the core! Did it work? Yes, it worked! Woo! Oh, big relief. I got really nervous when the kind of the light shines through some of the thinner areas of fiberglass and I was really nervous that actually we had missed it entirely and it was coming through too far forward. But now that we've got the first one in, it means that the other two we can just measure up off that paddy and then we can use the same measurements on the other side. First scary moment done. Nice job! It's good. The second I drilled the hole, a fairy came past and gave us massive sweat. <laughs> 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 I think we're okay. We're okay! We're okay! Right, we've got the primary teacher on it again. What have we got? You can't go wrong with a paper template. Um, in water? I needed parallel lines. So we've got the water line, like the, what do you call it, the bootstripe, uh, that goes along the bottom. And we're just having to hope that that is straight, horizontal. Um, and so, I've measured up where I think the hole is, and then I've used a not very straight ruler to uh, try and measure the other two. I can't even remember which way around it goes that way. Filling me with confidence right now. Absolutely. So I'm going to put this on and put a bolt into the bottom hole that exists and then I should be able to mark up these two and when we take the template away this should still match up to where the marks are. There's your soggy template holding up. It's not doing too badly. I feel like uh, you didn't flip the template. Oh, good shout. I'm useful for something. Okay, so this way around. Right. And that way around. Don't drop it, don't drop it, don't drop it! We don't have a spare. What did you do, 100 glow? Squish! <laughs> this should be the final stage. So now, basically, if we can get this the right way around, that's gonna fit on like that, and then they go on there. And that's not there that's going up to the dice break. It does be like click, 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 and it's done. You ready? Except we need to go inside the hull and reinforce. So we're going to put a pad behind, and that way it's something called G10. It's like super dense fiberglass. Yeah, that's good. Stop. I can show you guys now. It's on there. <laughs> yeah. We got a pad in place. Look at those two nasty looking ones. That is perfect. We did it! It's finished. It's actually done. <laughs> it's very much night time. Yeah, sorry we didn't get to film much of the second half of that install, but the first half was just as it came towards sunset. The second half was like this. Yeah, I had a head torch which died as soon as I started using it, so most of it was done in the dark, but I think it looks great. I mean, we can't see it. It's there. It's probably shadowy in the background here, but it is there and we'll show you in the morning. But um, I mean, right now it looks cool. I stood on it already, so that's a good sign. That's a good sign, right? I can't believe you're leaving me hanging. <laughs> All right, it's the next morning, so it's actually light enough to show you the uh, the bowsprit and the rigging and everything that we have set up. I figured it would be easier if I came in the dinghy so that you can actually see what we're talking about. It worked! We didn't sink last night or anything. So we have our bowsprit. It's it's really simple, actually. We have two pad eyes down on the bows. These Dyneema lines are adjustable, so we can actually angle this out the way when we want to get into tight spaces or bring it down. And pretty much it acts like a tent or a pyramid with this center pole that I'm standing on. And our spinnaker halyard is what levers it back up. So between these three points and the pole, it's kind of, well, it's rock solid, look. It looks so good. It's amazing. It looks kind it of It actually proper. worked. It's a real bowsprit. Who knew? I know.
And we have a cool new way to look for dolphins. You can like stand out here and be with the dolphins. Oh, I'm gonna sail there all the time. We could probably just about sit down, although I might fall in if I try. <laughs> it looks so comfy. Dolphin. Really dolphin. It's fine, we'll just like CGI some dolphins coming out of the water right now.